Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials. And you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's an exam technique guide and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're in the exam room working through your exam paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like that'd be really great and subscribe to my channel. Please do subscribe and share, there's lots more to come. And so we're going to carry on with the general exercises. We're going to look at exercise two. So if you turn to the back of your book to page 54, we'll be having a look at this. So I always recommend that you use these as revision exercises um, and look up any information that you might have forgotten from previous grades. Remember, this is working on information first covered in grades one, two, three, four and now five as well so all of the information from all of those grades could be referred to in these questions and in your exam paper and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where to look back and find the answers and then I suggest you just work through and figure out the answers as best you can and I think you'll find that once you look back over the information it'll all come flooding back to you and it doesn't matter if you don't remember something just have a crack at it we're only ever working in pencil and you'll have a, a trusty eraser to hand and so it doesn't matter you can always rub it out and have another go it's always better to learn by your mistakes and so all of the questions refer to this little piece of music here and we're going to have a look at these questions. So I'm going to tell you where to look back over the previous grades to find the answers for these, should you need to look it up. So we're asked to give a full description of the first chord in bar four, and you'll find out the answer to help you to do that in grade five, section H. We're asked what the harmonic interval between the two oboes on the first bit of each bars and so harmonic intervals we first have a proper look at those in all its detail in grade 4 section H. We're asked about this musical term the performance direction SF we first look at that in grade 2 section I we're asked what this sign means and we first come across this in grade 4, section K. We're asked to draw a bracket over five notes that form a rising chromatic melody all in one instrument part. So we're looking for five next door notes that make a chromatic scale and uh, you'll find that first of all in grade 4, section J. However, you're going to have to do a bit of detective work to find it within this piece. They sort of sometimes sneakily um, hide the most obvious point with that. So we're asked which brass instrument of the woodwind family is closely related to the oboe and the cor anglais. So um, I think we find out that and also the next question what do these two woodwind instruments have in common? Uh, in grade 5, section M. So you might just want to have a look at your PDF document. However, all of the information isn't for this question, or these two questions aren't necessarily found in your book. So you're going to just have a, a bit of a guess at that if you're not sure. And you just learn these things as you go along. If you're not a woodwind player, it's not always most obvious. And so the last question asks us to transpose bars one to four up a perfect fifth. And we first do this in grade five, section D. And so that's where you need to find those answers if you're not quite confident to just go for it straight away. So I suggest that you just dip out of the video, have a crack at those, and then if you come back into the video, we'll go through these questions together. 
So I'm hoping that you've had a go with this and so we'll work through these answers together. Doesn't matter if you go wrong or you haven't quite got it, you'll learn by your mistakes. And so we're looking uh, at the first chord in bar four. So we're looking at this chord here. Remember we're reading both staves in treble clef and it says assume that the key is F major. I guess that's gonna change later on. However, we can just safely assume we're in F major here. And so in order to figure out the chord, we need to give ourselves our choice of chords. So we need chords one, two, three, four, and five. And so we've got uh, F is chord one, F, G, A, B, C. I would always just write these out. You never know when you're gonna have to just refer back to them so we might as well just get them all prepped and ready. F, A, C, G, B, D, A, C, E, B, D, F. So there's our first, third and fifth. And we've got A, B, C for our root position um, inversions. So now we're all prepped up. We've done all the thinking. So let's look at the chord. We've got a C, an F and an A. So that tells us that we're in chord one. However, the fact that there's a C in the bass Although it's a treble clef, it's still the bass note, it's the lowest note, and so it's the second inversion, so it's a chord 1C. Let's carry on. We're asked to find the harmonic interval between the two oboes on the first beat of each of these bars. So we're looking at bars 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So we're looking at the first beat of bar 2, 3, four, five, and six. And we're looking to the two oboes, so we're looking at these two notes here. And so the first one, we have a B flat to a C, so that's a second of some sort. We take the lowest note as our key note, so if B flat major were our key note, Next door to that is C, which is part of B-flat major scale, and so it's a major second. Let's look at the one for bar three. We've got a one, three, five. We have a fifth of some sort, and it's an F to a C, and that would make a perfect fifth. Nothing's been chromatically altered there. And so now... We have a one, two, three of some sort at the beginning of bar four. It's a third. And if we take our lowest note as the key note, F, F major would have A naturals, which is the case here. And so we know that's part of the major scale, and so that's a major third. So we'll just pop that down. Bar five. So here. We have a one, two, three again, a third again. However, if we take our lowest note as A as the key note, A to C sharp would be major. A to C natural is minor. It's part of the minor scale. And you can also see that A to C sharp, if that's the major, the minor one is smaller. We've made the interval smaller. And that's another way of confirming that we've got a minor third. And then finally, we need to look at bar six. And so we are here. So we've got a B flat to a C sharp. We've got a one, two of some sort. So B flat to C, we've already um, discussed that in the first example. We know B flat to C natural is major. And then because the C is sharpened, we've made the major interval larger and so we've augmented it, and so we know that we've got an augmented second. That's that completed. So what is the musical effect SF? And we first discovered in uh, grade two that that means forced. In grade four, we learned to describe this um, symbol here as a turn, where we weave around the note. 
Now then, uh, a bit of detective work for this next one. We need to find five notes that form a rising chromatic melody. You might find it helpful to have your uh, piano keyboard here to visualise. So the first job is to look ahead and just find um, a group of notes that rise in step. And the only time that you get five notes or anything like that rising in step is here. And so you first look at this and you think, well, uh, G to A is not chromatic, so that won't do. However, from this point on, and the sneaky part is it actually goes over the bar line, we have A, B flat, sorry, um, we have, yeah, a, that's correct, yeah, A, B flat, B natural, and then over the bar line, we then have C and C sharp. So it's just a little bit sneaky that we have to look over the bar line, which unfortunately means we have to move to the next section, which moves to the next line of music. If it had just carried on, we'd have seen that easily but the music has to jump line. Unfortunately, the page wasn't long enough to instantly show all of that. So now we've done that, let's have a look at the next bit. So this is where just a bit of general knowledge sort of is required and it, it can't be sort of revised all at once. It's just you have to pick these bits up as you go along. So. The bassoon is closely related to the oboe or the cor anglais. I suppose you could say double bassoon. And the reason that this would be related and the oboe and the cor anglais have in common actually with the bassoon, it's not just that they're reed instruments, it's not just that they're woodwind instruments, they are double reed instruments. The clarinet wouldn't belong to that because that's a single reed instrument. However, these are specifically double reed instruments. So there we go. And then we're on to the last one. So it asks us to um, transpose bars one to four of the music. Now it's a shame that we have to jump to the bottom of the page. Actually in the exam, they more helpfully move this blank stave right next to the bit that you're going to be working on. So we'll just have to keep shuffling the page for the moment. So we're going to be writing four bars of music. So let's just get that ready. So we'll sort of divide our bars equally. And then we know we're going to have enough room. Ordinarily, I'd try and align the music to fit so we didn't get lost, but that's not possible at the bottom end of the page. So let's just get all of our bits and bobs, we know that we're going to need to say that it's adagio cantabile, although that isn't one of the questions, you could always just um, look those terms up as a bit of extra revision. I think both of those you'll find in grade one, section Q actually, if you wanted to do a bit of extra revision there. And so it's asking us to transpose the bars upper perfect fifth because this is a horn like the English horn the cor anglais it transposes uh, down a fifth as it plays so we need to show the notation upper fifth and so here we're going to have to think what key signature we're in at the moment we're in F major and so if we count up from F major one, two, three, four, five. We're now going to be in the key of C major, so there's no key signature required. And then if everything's going to go up a fifth, I'm just going to sketch in above what that's going to be. One, three, five takes us to C, down a step B, B again, F, A, C, and we're going. Um, down a step, down a step takes us to A, C, E, G take, there we go, down a step, 
same note we're going to have to oh, same note but we're going to have to think about the accidentals there and then one three five takes us to g so i'm just going to write those note heads in now down here so we've got a time signature of three four should have done that before really so we've got a c b rest rest b c two quaver beats two eighth note rests down a step to the b the A down a step is a dotted note. Down a step to the G. Down a step to the F. And now it's the F again. However, here in the original, the B flat of the key signature is raised by a natural sign. And so here the natural is raised to semitone by a sharp sign. So we've just moved that up a semitone in relation to the original and then next door note is a G and that's a dotted note so we just need some stems now we've done all the thinking just watch which way your stems go this will be beamed and I suppose we can finish the bar correctly with the rest. It should be piano, P. And then we just need a few little slurs. And then all the way to the end. There we go. And that's that completed. I hope you found that useful. I hope it's helped you to just go back and revise some rusty topics. Um, there's always um, more that we can do and we'll have a look at the next exercise in the next video i hope that you're enjoying working through this if you can give me a like that'd be really great and please subscribe to my channel to keep updated and please do visit sharonbill.com if you have a browse around my website and make use of all the resource that's available there to help you thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye